it's the most common reason why so many people get stressed out, burnt out, tired, frustrated, or just let their mindset and emotions go crazy. It's not your fault, you just don't know how to plan for these types of things. Driven mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Today, we are talking about growth. Now, I know part of the reason why you're listening to this is because you're a driven mofo, you like growth. Now, this whole community loves growth, right? We love the rewards of growth. We love the money. We love the relationships that we build. We love the community of people that we have around us. All of those things are great. You know, we love the lifestyle that growth creates as well. But here's the biggest challenge. Most of you aren't thinking ahead about the problems that are going to come up during growth. And so they blindside you, which then freaks you out, gets you stressed out, frustrated, tired, burnt out, all caught in your head. So how do we deal with this? What do, what do we need to do here? This is something I learned from a mentor many, many years ago, and it's helped me a lot, although I forget it quite, quite regularly as well because I'm human. But here's the thing. If we want to grow to the next level, and life is just levels and business is just levels, relationships are just levels, money is just levels, health is just levels. If you're at level one, you're going to have level one problems and level one rewards. Now, for those hyper-analytical people out there, you're thinking, well, how do we define level one? I don't know. We're just making shit up here. But at level one, there are level one problems. There are level one challenges. There's level one knowledge and lessons and level one rewards. When I meet people, they see the outcomes from others. Like yesterday, I was at a supercar event and I had people come up and they're like, you know, What's your advice if you wanted to buy a supercar? Now, these people are like 18, 19, 20. Some of them are 13, right? And I'm going, look, don't even worry about the cars. Don't, don't worry about any of that shit because it doesn't matter. It's very, very rare that you're going to be able to buy a supercar or even have a nice house or even live a nice life or even be able to travel in, in a nice way. Like you can travel backpacking and shit like that for bare minimum. But if you want to live at a higher level, you've got to have higher level problems. Therefore, you need to work extremely hard. You need to be focused for long periods of time because very rarely is this going to happen in a year or two. These things are going to take time. Unless you've got a massive bull run in a market, like if you invested in crypto, I can't even remember, maybe 2019 or something like that, and you get this massive bull run where the whole market just escalates quickly, you could be an absolute dipshit and a moron and you would make money. Now, most of those crypto bros have lost all their money. Why? Because they never learned the skills. They never had to go through the hardships, the pain, the suffering of having to deal with proper money. So they lose it. When you work extremely hard for long periods of time, what you realize is that with every level of either work or career or business, you're going to have different levels of problems. So you, you fix something, you fix a problem, and then another problem reoccurs. And then you fix that problem and another problem reoccurs. And then another problem reoccurs. Now, what I found is that most people out there think that they're going to get rid of problems. So they run off of a to-do list and they go, wow, when I've got my to-do list done, well, I'll feel good because now there's less shit on my plate. That's not how high-level people think. High-level people think, how do I get bigger problems? I would rather have a $10 million problem than a $1 million problem. I would rather have a million dollar problem than a $100,000 problem. Why? Because... With different levels comes different challenges, different rewards. So if you want to live a rewarding lifestyle at a level 10, you have to have level 10 problems. So these young kids who came up yesterday and these young guys and girls who came up yesterday to chat about, you know, how did you get a supercar? How did you buy it? Here's my answer. Go and find really big problems and go and solve them. Work extremely hard because everything is going to be way harder than what you think and it's going to take way longer than what you think to, to fix it. The question is, do you have the character? Do you have the mental capacity? Do you have the emotional resilience? Do you have the physical and mental energy to keep going for long periods of time? That's really what it comes down to. And that's how people win. Now, if you have a look, success is almost like a pyramid. There's a few people at the top. And then there's, a, there's probably a few more people, the level below, and a few more people, the level below that. And then when you come to the masses, there's shitloads of people. Why are there shitloads of people who just do what everybody else does? 
because that's where they're comfortable. They're the levels of problems and comfort that they have. Like right now, we have this cost of living crisis, apparently. But the thing is that the cost of living crisis is an average person problem. It's not It's not rich people problem. It's an average person problem. And yes, does average people's problems affect rich people? Yeah. But rich people aren't going to sell one of their $3 million Ferraris in order to make payroll. Who cares? They probably have 20 fucking Ferraris if they've got that much cash. But what my point is, is that different levels have different problems. If you want to fit in with the average, then you listen to average people. You believe what average people believe. You do what average people do. But that's you're only ever going to get average. Very rarely do I meet someone. Actually, I've never really met someone who has a supercar, a multi-million dollar house, or gets to travel and fly around the world in business class and stay in nice hotels. Very rarely do I meet people like that, or even who put their kids in very nice schools. Very rarely do I meet people like that who will sit and complain about average people problems. They're not sitting there going, oh, electricity prices have gone up. How do I pay my electricity bill? They're like, yeah, the price of everything's gone up. So therefore, we've had to tighten systems. We've had to make processes more effective. We've got to make sure management is on top of things. We've got to have better ops. And we just have to manage our finances and our budgets more effectively. What does that do? It makes a better business owner. That's it. They're not all stressed out and frustrated and bitching and moaning and complaining and calling up talkback radio and fucking whinging about everything. They're not doing that because they're not average. That's what average people do. So if you want to get to level two, you then have to go and solve all of level one problems. You have to learn all of the level one lessons. And then after that, you get level one rewards. Now, they might only be small, but then you'll get level two problems. Now, at level two, most people get burnt out, stressed out, frustrated, and most people give up. That's why most people will be stuck at the same level. Whatever level, whatever level we call average, let's say average is level seven. Most people are stuck on level seven problems, which is how do I make just enough money to scrape by to pay my bills and hopefully have my four weeks off a year and potentially go on one holiday per year? That's average people problems. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if you want to do that. The problem is, is if you have level 10 dreams and you're stuck at level seven, that then becomes mentally and emotionally draining. Because if you look at people at level 10 and you go, oh, they're so lucky. I wish I had their lifestyle. You're going to resent those people. That's why I get some people who get pissed off that I have supercars and nice house and I travel and all that shit. They're the trolls online that bitch and moan and whinge. Why? Because they have level 20 goals. They have a level five work ethic. They have level six problems and they hang out with level five people. What do they expect? You are not going to get to that higher level by hanging out with people at the same level as you, if you've got higher levels of goals and ambition. You have to go and immerse yourself around people who are operating at a higher level. This is why I created my business odyssey program. This is why I bring in experts who are at high levels to help to communicate and share their stories, share their tips, share their tools. This is also why I spend tens, if not hundreds of thousands per year on mentors, coaches, and people that I work with and experts that are around me so that I can grow and learn off of them. Because when I go to them and I go, hey, I've got a million dollar problem, they go, oh, that's, no, that's not that big a deal at all. Here's what we need to do. I need you to think through it like this. I need you to act like this. I need you to behave like this. I need you to think like this. And then when I start doing that, I go, oh shit, all these emotions are coming up. And they go, oh, that's completely normal when you're going through it. But just keep working at it. It's probably going to take you six to 12 months to solve this issue. But when we get out the other side, watch what happens. And you know what happens? You get the reward of that level but then the next level's problems pop up. And so you go through the same process again. So I consistently train my team and my leadership team especially on what are the problems that are going to occur when we fix this problem. So if we want to go to a bigger level, which we're going to now, now we're starting to grow and branch out into the US. I'm starting to speak to my team about what are the challenges? What are the problems we have when we do this? How do we manage what we've got here in Australia? How do we bring in the right people to help manage the Australian market? How do we then also surround ourselves with people who are great in their fields from marketing to sales and so on? We've got to build a sales team now. We've also got to keep growing our marketing team. Also my management and leadership team. And then now how do we replicate that in the US market? That's tough. We've got some challenges there because I know that once I go to the US market, some things are going to fall apart in Australia and I'm going to have to get on top of them and, and fix all those issues. But it is what it is. Also, it's going to cost more money now to, to divide across two countries. 
there's also going to be different exchange rates. So now I'm going to have to open up a company or an LLC, I believe, in the US. And then I've got to pay US tax and everything like that. So I've got to figure out which state do I pay the least amount of tax in and so on. So all of these problems and challenges are the next level of challenge. If you're not thinking about your next level of challenge, you do not deserve the reward that comes with that level. And like I said, I know a lot of you who are listening to this right now are hanging out with people and are spending time with people who are infiltrating your mind, putting shit in your mind because they're at a lower level. Be very careful of those people. I spoke to a business owner last week and they said to me, you know, I really want to jump on one of your programs. It was We're talking about Business Growth Odyssey. You know, I want to be part of your business mastermind. And then they're like, well, yeah, but you know, my, my wife just, you know, she's just concerned about some things and blah, 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 blah. Is your wife running the company? Well, no. Okay. Are all of her friends business owners? Well, no. Does she work in the business? Well, no. Okay. So you're allowing her to make the decision. Is she going to be the most informed one? Now, either you're a shit salesperson and can't sell it to her. You're having hesitations yourself and you're using her as an excuse, which that's a pretty shit weak option. Or you're not talking to her consistently about new levels, new devils, right? So I love that saying, new level, new devils, which means new challenges. Are you saying, here's the goal, here's the vision that we've got. We want our kids to go to a great private school or a great school. We want to be able to travel more. We want to be able to have a great team of people around us so it frees up more time. We want to be able to have date night once a week. But in order to do that, I need to reduce my workload. I have to learn a whole bunch of things in order to do that. Now, the truth is, I can't come to you, my wife, with those challenges and those problems because you are not an expert in any area of my business. Okay, this is the real conversation that needs to happen. But most people are fucking weak. I mean, they can't even communicate effectively with their intimate partner that they spend a lot of time with. Imagine what happens when they've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 staff around them. How do they think that they're going to be effective at a high level in business when they can't even communicate with a person that they're close to that they can pretty much be honest with? What happens when you've got a whole bunch of people with different value systems, different value structures that have different goals, different ambitions, different work ethics, different people that they hang out with, different habits? It's a lot harder. So my point is that new level, new devils. You really have to be thinking about the next level of problems. You really have to be getting advice from people at the levels that you want to go to. Now, I wouldn't recommend that one person fits all of those categories. Now, if you're a small business or a scaling business, yeah, you might have one or two people. But as you start to scale and you start building a really large business, like a lot of people with larger businesses will hire me as a private mindset coach. They don't hire me as a business strategist because they want to hire someone who potentially has an MBA or you know, they might be a head of operations or something like that, but that'll be their expert in that field. They might have a head of finance, which is a chief financial officer or a CFO. You've got to start thinking about the level that you're playing at and the people that you need around you. If you're a startup, one to two key people is fine, right, to mentor you. As you start to scale, maybe two or three. As you grow to high, high levels, you're going to need a lot of consultants. You're going to need a lot of experts around you, and they need to be niched. So when I meet people that have a 10 or a $15 million business, and I say to them, who are your coaches? Who are your mentors? Who do you get consulting advice from? They're like, oh, I don't know. I got an accountant and I know a couple of other people. And then they wonder why they're stressed out, burnt out, frustrated and tired and overworking. It's normally because they don't have enough of the right people around them giving the right advice. So they just can't scale beyond that. You really need to be thinking about the right environment as you grow as well. Because new levels, new devils, those people have to be able to help you through those challenges. And the faster you get the right information, the faster you get the right advice, the faster you learn what you need to learn, the faster you can grow through those problems, which then give you the next level of reward. But guess what's going to happen? After that level of reward, you're going to go back and you're going to have another problem. What happens is though, when most people hit that next level of problem, they shit their pants, get scared, they're afraid, and they allow their mindset and emotions to control the way they behave. And so they downsize. And I know that a lot of you out there who are listening to this have grown your businesses and have downsized the business. So you might've had 10 staff and now you've got six. Why? Because you're comfortable with that level of problems. That's fine. You're just never going to scale beyond that unless you get out of your own way, which means you've got to deal with your mindset. You have to deal with your emotions. And then finally, you have to have the right actions in order to grow, which means you've got to have the right knowledge from the right people. If not, you'll always stay at six people. Now, I watch my dad 
Grow a business, contract a business. Expand a business, contract a business. Grow a business, kill the business. Expand the business, kill the business. He could only really handle three staff. He could only handle three, maybe four max. Every time he grew beyond that, he would just downsize the business because he'd get so stressed out, burnt out, tired, frustrated. And he didn't want to listen to his son. He didn't want to go get coaching. He didn't want to have mentoring. He didn't want to pay anybody. He thought that this stuff was stupid. But guess who the stupid one was? The guy with extremely good skill sets, a lot of work, yet not a lot of team members. Why? Because he just couldn't handle working with people. He didn't want to become a leader. He didn't want to become a manager. He didn't want systems and processes and structure. He just liked going out to his jobs, getting shit done, telling people what to do, and then that was it. You just can't grow a business that way. Not a real business anyway. So he stayed small. Anyway, he's retired only a month or so ago. And all he did, instead of selling the business or doing anything, he just shut the business down. There was a couple of guys that he had working for him. He already knew contacts in the industry and he just said, hey, do you want someone to come and work for you? Here you go. And he just essentially got rid of the guys. That was it. That was it. Business done. That's 30 to 40 years worth of work gone. Just that simple. Why? Because he just didn't want new levels, new devils. He just didn't want to grow. Something to think about, team. Really be thinking about what is the next level of problems and challenges that you need to deal with if you want to grow and expand. And that happens in all areas of life. Health, relationships, finances, business, career. If you're trying to avoid problems, you're avoiding growth. It's a really bad idea. And I would say that 90% of society is avoiding problems, which is why their life is full of the same problems that they just never get over. New level, new devils. Keep growing through it. Keep pushing hard. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking ass, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Most people waste their life, and I just don't want you to be one of them.